Hello, this is Xbox Eye, and this is the bonus footage, uh, the very first bonus footage in this run of bonus footages for the Entar weapon guide that went out last week. Now, it might take me a little while to get into the swing of things, but uh, these should be coming out fairly regularly again. I realise I missed the G11 and the Kipris, but, uh, but going forward, every single weapon guide that goes out will have a corresponding bonus footage at some point. Uh, I'll record it alongside the script. I've just recorded the MP7 voiceover, so that's done now. And over the next couple of days I'll be editing, editing that for Friday. But at the same time as recording the scripts, I like to do the bonus footage then. So this is, this is, well, this is where we're at currently. How does the bonus footage work, Stuart? Well, it's very simple. What I do is I take comments and questions from the, the main weapon guide video, and I shall answer them here. In the future, I'm thinking I might actually pluck some questions from Twitter as well. I may also plumb Facebook. For, uh, for questions and stuff like that. But for this first episode, I've just taken a bunch of comments. Uh, I I have 23 by my count. I uh, don't know if I'll have time to cover them all, but uh, we'll take them one by one. And uh, the, anyway, these are, these questions, these comments will be placed over the leftover clips that I had from my recording with the weapon of the week. So, wasting no time, let's start off with the first comment. Rock or Blues in Norway says, Finally back, lesson three. Uh, you see, without fail, whenever I take like two or three weeks off from posting videos and I and I post a new video, everyone's like, oh, he's back, he's back. I never left. I just took a little break. Oh. But yes, 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 I'm back and uh, I'm locked in for what, 38 weapon guides? Maybe more, in fact. Um, I don't think that 38 figure, I think that excludes the combat knife. It excludes the killstreak weapons. So, uh, so basically, you've got me for pretty much the entire year. I'll probably be winding up in September, October. Theme 2021 says, Stu, will you make an assault shield weapon guide? Yes, yes I will. Um, I realise I skipped over the riot shield in MW2, that was for time constraints. But I have no such excuse this time around, so I will be covering the, uh, the assault shield in due course. I probably won't enjoy using it, but uh, well, there you go. Okay, uh, Lucas Lodovico says, Stu, question from someone who hasn't had his hands on BO2 yet. From your experience, is the game really an SMG dominant game? Uh, no doubt SMGs are very, very prevalent. Uh, however, having said that, I don't think the game is necessarily SMG dominant because LMGs are better than ever, sniper rifles are far better than they ever were in Black Ops. Uh, the assault rifles are good, but not necessarily as uh, as good as they have been. And the shotguns are good as well. Uh, everything's pretty good. I mean, relatively speaking, it's just, I think the SMGs are maybe more forgiving in a close quarters gunfight, and the automatic weapons in general are always going to be more forgiving. So now, uh, with the state of the game being that people don't really know the maps terribly well, having a weapon that's more forgiving in close quarters gunfights is probably the easiest way to play the game, so a lot of people are using SMGs. Pair this with the fact that the assault rifles are arguably less powerful than they have been. Uh, assault rifles have always been the sort of the, the most powerful weapon class, the most versatile. But that's changed. They are still very versatile, but they don't excel at close range. I mean, if you take the Black Ops for mass, that was a, as good as any SMG up close. Better than most, in fact. That's no longer the case. A lot of the assault rifles now are pretty weak up close compared to an SMG. But you might make the argument that's how the game is supposed to be balanced. SMGs are supposed to be dominant up close. Uh, whether the SMGs will get a nerf remains to be seen, although... I don't know, I'm not entirely convinced that they will be nerfed particularly hard, because... Uh, the SMGs are limited in their role. You know, they're not particularly good at, at a range. But we'll see. But uh, if you were to play the game right now, you probably would die by SMGs an awful lot. Okay, next up. Proximity Value says, Xbox Ahoy, what do you think of free-for-all in Black Ops 2? Because I remember you didn't like it in Black Ops due to bad close-range gun balance. Well, I've been playing a fair old bit of free-for-all in Black Ops 2, and I've got to say, I actually rather do like it in this game. It's a combination of factors. Um, the fact that close range weapons are in fact incredibly effective um, at least compared to the Black Ops 1 SMGs which were a bit nerfy 
And uh, I think the map design as well, uh, at least on some of the maps, lends itself to uh, to pretty good free-for-all gameplay. Uh, slums, for instance. Oh, the spawns are crazy on slums. I, I love it like that. It's brilliant. Kills for days. It's awfully good fun. So, yeah, you can probably expect to see me playing a fair old amount of free-for-all. Um, at least with the close-range weapons. Uh, the LMGs, probably not so much. Uh, I don't know what mode I'll play for those. Domination is normally a good one for LMGs. Or failing that, just basic team deathmatch. Culty Sack says, Stu, why does your voice sound so different from the first end of two weapon guides up until now? Uh, there are probably two factors in that. The first is in my actual delivery. Uh, my, I'm probably more practiced now from the voiceover perspective, so... I'm more confident in my delivery. I would say that I, I have a little bit more uh, vitality and, and power and passion in my voiceover delivery now, because largely because I have a little bit more confidence on that front. Uh, I, I think, uh, listening back to my older stuff, especially the first M2 video, the M4 guide, I'm a little timid. But, you know, it's it was new ground for me, it was a new challenge. And, uh, you know, with maturation comes comes this sort of development of my delivery style. So that's definitely one factor. In addition to that, there probably have been some changes in my compression and normalization settings. My microphone's the same. In fact, I've been using the same microphone ever since day one. But uh, I, I probably have muddled around with my, my audio settings slightly. So yeah, these, these sort of combination of, uh, of factors have probably sort of resulted in the evolution of my my audio sound. Uh, Sakushi Ricky says, Stu, welcome back! So, what overall features, changes do you like in this game compared to the previous Call of Duty games? Also, how was your Thanksgiving? Well, first of all, we don't really celebrate Thanksgiving in the UK. Uh, we used to, I think, we used to, uh, in the religious calendar, we used to have like a harvest Thanksgiving festival, but uh, in one particular period of reform, I think all of the, well, quite a lot of the religious holidays were pared back and we were left with just Christmas and Easter. So we, we don't really have like a, a harvest time Thanksgiving or a sort of a November kind of feast. So we have, Christmas is really the closest thing we've got. Religious holidays kind of, they, they sort of fall into two major categories. You've got the sort of the fast and the atonement and the, uh, the feast and the Thanksgiving. Uh, culturally, in the British calendar, we've only got Easter and Christmas. As far as new features and changes I like, um, it's kind of... I don't know, it's kind of uh, a whole bunch of stuff that sort of compounds into a, a composite, really, doesn't it? I really like the meta game and the way the unlocks work in Black Ops 2. I've got to say, I, 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 I've actually been prestiging. I really like the fact that your weapon progress doesn't reset, that your challenges don't reset. Because that was... Probably one of the major reasons I I wouldn't prestige before, because it kind of it completely wipes the slate clean, which I thought was rather a shame. So yeah, it's it's nice to have some persistence, definitely. As far as the gunplay is concerned, as I've mentioned, the, the, the sort of every single weapon category has a very distinct niche, which I think they've Treyarch have managed to do that quite well. Even the almighty assault rifles, they've they are very versatile, but they. Jack of all trades, masters of none. You know, that, that saying comes to mind. So yeah, overall, I, d I do like this game. You hear a lot of people complaining about lag compensation. I don't know. I'm not sure how much that affects me. I think, in my experience at least, it's not necessarily that I'm suffering from more lag. It's just that sometimes gunfights feel a little bit different. I think maybe um, the way that gunfights go down, the way that sort of your enemy's actions are portrayed in real time, maybe don't mesh with what actually happens in the netcode. And sometimes you, you can kind of feel like gunfights are unfair. But uh, after a period of adjustment, I think you kind of realise that the netcode isn't quite the same as it has been in the past. And while it might seem unfair, it, it can be... I mean, it goes both ways, doesn't it? And you've got you've to sort of remember that even if an enemy seems unready, it might just be the fact that their character is being reflected as looking the wrong way or whatever. And in f an actual fact, they might be 200 milliseconds ahead of that, or however much latency is involved. And so, I think you need to be maybe less bold when approaching gunfights like that. And I, I think there's a shift away from uh, modern warfare 
style gunfights as well, where damage is a little bit higher. I also want to say the hitboxes are a little bit more generous in the Modern Warfare style of games. I think you need to be more accurate, you know, because it is entirely possible to shoot at somebody and, and miss a whole bunch of times because you're shooting around them instead of actually directly upon them. So accuracy counts for a lot more. And because the weapons were a little bit nerfy, because you're dealing with four or five shot kills, you need to get as many sort of shots onto target as possible and you need to stay on target. So stuff like view flinch from, you know, taking incoming damage, that can really sort of mess your game up. So all in all, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I like the game in general, the whole sort of lag thing. I'm reserving judgment on because I think it I think it just feels different to previous games. That's the main thing. Bramaz says, what about the score streaks? Uh, do you mean recommendations? I'm probably not going to make recommendations for score streaks because there's not really much in the way of strategy. There's only really one scale, and that is, you know, the size of the score streaks you can attain with any given loader. Beyond that, I, I, I mean, there may be some synergy, some strategy, but not really enough to sort of warrant inclusion of score streak strategy. Um, I may, however, cover score streaks in their own videos at some point in the future. Uh, weapons are my priority, of course. They're going to be coming every Friday. I'm also going to try and do some secondary videos. I mean, secondary not as in the secondary weapons. They'll get their own loadouts and everything. But I mean, secondary as far as um, other stuff, other pick 10 items. I want to do. I want to try the attachment videos first. I'm going to start off with the reflex site and talk about that. Uh, basically, just sort of go over there and the attachments uses what it does. In the case of the optics, I'll go over the effects that it has on aim time, if any, and uh, zoom level as well, because there are some interesting effects. Well, not, not that interesting, but a little bit interesting, and that's I think good enough to make a video. And I can always, I, I can also talk about different reticles, stuff like that. But uh, after I've approached the attachment videos, um, there are, I don't know, there are how many attachments? 20, 25, something like that? Uh, maybe later, mid-season, maybe I could uh, sort of tackle some of the score streaks. Maybe I'll do equipment, maybe I'll do perks, that sort of thing, who knows? Uh, weapons are, of course, the primary thing that I'll be doing. But um, we'll try some other stuff as well. Mind x one -er says, Stu, will you cover the combat knife? It is a weapon you can pick from. A combat knife video is needed. Um, I actually think that's a pretty good idea. Uh, given the viability of, you know, kind of a knife-centric loadout, I think that's uh, that could be an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I mean, the ballistic knife video might be similar, but we'll see. I think I can probably go for a, a, a knife-only sort of loadout. Maybe get some uh, combat axes on there as well. So yeah, I, I could see myself doing a combat knife video, in due course. I'm not sure precisely when it will be, but at some point. Expert Schultz 777 says, Hey Stu, coffee or tea? I know beer is superior. Ah, oh, thank goodness, a, a silly question. I like to mix in the odd silly question. Um, I'm more of a coffee drinker. I'm not a big, not a big fan of tea, which I know is, is blasphemous, given that I'm British, I suppose. But for me, tea, I don't know. It kind of tastes... I don't, I don't know, I don't really taste it properly, I don't think. Tastes a little bit soapy and a little bit watery to me. I I don't really dig it that much. Coffee, on the other hand, I like the roasted flavours and the, the bitterness of coffee. I, I really do enjoy that, but uh, no, tea doesn't do it for me, so I I generally prefer coffee in such situations. Blastuna Ruto says, which Call of Duty do you think is the beat, Stuart? Well, I suppose this is where I'm supposed to just say, oh, Call of Duty 4, man, that's the best, the original, you can't beat, well, which is probably true. I did like COD 4. But, um, no, I mean, the COD I played the most is the one that's just been released, isn't it? It's always the new one that we play the most of. There's a certain, I, I think there's a degree of merit to the novelty, which is why I'll be playing Black Ops 2 for the next year. And which is why I'll probably enjoy it as well, because there's new challenges, new stuff to do, and of course a new video series to put together. It also helps that I think Black Ops 2 is probably a pretty gosh darn good Call of Duty. Um, there's some nice innovation there, and like I said, the metagame is probably the best of any Call of Duty I've ever seen. I've heard some mumblings of people saying that, that Black Ops 2 is the best COD since COD 4, and although I'm, I kind of want to be tentative, and not really sort of too committal on this, I, I kind of 
I think to myself, maybe, maybe it is in some respects. I, I'm kind of, I'm thinking of M Dub Two with rose tinted glasses. I did enjoy M Dub Two, genuinely did. But then I started having flashbacks to, to noob tubes and, and the Model 1887s and the javelin glitches and, oh god, it's all coming back. Ooh, Zero Flame, ooh, says, I know it has not been a critical portion of the reviews, but I'd like to see the actual drop-off and minimum ranges corresponding to the weapon. With average ranges constantly changing between games, such terms like moderate just doesn't seem adequate. Now, I like to get sort of accurate figures in there, but I need to be sort of... I need to be careful how many sort of numbers I throw at the viewer. I would... <sighs> I would say if you're really seeking exact figures for range, you probably just want to look up the uh, the statistics tables yourself and pluck it out from there. Um, what I do with those figures is, um, if you look on the damage slide, on the top right there is a bar pictogram, and that accurately reflects damage over range. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the bars on the horizontal axis are actually fixed units. I forget precisely how many they are. Uh, it works out at about a few meters per unit. And then the uh, the vertical axis is shots to kill. I'm actually not 100% sure on how the damage model works in this game. It's slightly different to previous Call of Duty titles. There's not a maximum and a minimum damage like there has been, and uh, a linear interpretation between them. Instead, uh, it's kind of non-linear, or multiple um, endpoint damage modeling. And I'm not sure how it's interpolated. But um, the numbers I have, um, I think the the max min shots to kill in the the damage range pictogram. I think that pretty, that works pretty well. I think as far as conveying the information, I don't know. I, I tried a thin line between uh, just being a spreadsheet of information and and actually being sort of human understandable data. And I I do try and sort of err on the the side of human understandable information. Jim Jam BNX says, I'm going to ask, Doom or Wolfenstein 3D? And you can't say Unreal Tournament. This is a cruel question. It's like saying, who do you love more, your mum or your dad? <laughs> oh, man, they're both originals. I mean, Wolfenstein 3D, that's the daddy. And Doom came later, but Doom is probably the more complete game, but you can't have one without the other. So I'm going to refuse to answer that one. Skeeterbert says, Stu, what do you think about the ARs getting a 0.25 ADS time while the SMGs have a 0.22? It seems like they took away a reason to use an SMG now. Uh, it's quite an odd design decision to add uh, 20 milliseconds onto the SMG aim time, but, uh, but ultimately I don't think it matters that much given that the SMGs have pretty good hipfire spread and uh, you can get accurate shots, especially with a laser sight, you can get accurate shots immediately without having to aim. So, functionally, I don't think it hurts the SMGs at a close range. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not sure why they've done that. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. I mean, like I say, it is only 20 milliseconds. So, I don't know, I mean, it certainly hasn't dampened the, uh, the adoption of SMGs in any case. Dare to be stupid says, I suggest running a Black Hat PDA instead of the FHJ. It can do the same job, plus more. What are your thoughts on the Black Hat? I see it as the most useful equipment. Uh, if you don't know, the Black Hat is its awfully fun. It's uh, its basically Hacker Pro from Black Ops. You can you can hack stuff, and you can do it through walls and from a distance. And uh, it is it is terribly good fun and, and actually pretty useful. Uh, bouncing baddies, shock charges. You can capture enemy care packages from a distance. You can destroy UAVs just by pointing it in the sky and, and waiting for it to complete the hack process. All sorts of stuff. Uh, all sorts of uh, sentry guns, guardian turrets, that sort of stuff. It's... It does everything. The only thing I would say is that the Black Hat, I think, synergizes well with the Engineer perk, which enables you to see stuff like Bouncing Betty's through walls. Uh, it's awfully good fun. You're hacking a Bouncing Betty through a wall, and then it turns uh, hostile to your um, opponent, and then it kills him. It's brilliant. Um, so yeah, if I was using Engineer in the build, I probably would. And uh, another thing, the FHJ is faster at destroying UAVs. The FHJ case, you know, it's beep beep locked, whereas the uh, the Black Hat takes quite a few seconds to actually destroy a UAV. So the FHJ is probably more suited to, to taking out the uh, the UAVs and counter UAVs. 
And uh, you also get two missiles with the FHJ, like the Stinger. And that's for one point, whereas a Black Hat PDA, one point, you only get one use. So there are trade-offs to be had. The FHJ is more specialised, but it is generally better at tackling Espo. I see German says, Extended clip! Rawr! The butt hurt! None of the weapons in the game fire from a clip! Ah! Yes. Yes, I, I feel your pain. Yes. Um, <laughs> the preferred term amongst those who are in the know is extended magazine. Clip refers to something uh, which, which holds bullets together um, prior to insertion in a magazine. Uh, for instance, the M1 Garand has an internal magazine, and the bullets, they are held in an N-block, eight-round clip. It is literally just a clip of metal that holds the bullets together. You take the clip, you insert the clip into the gun, and uh, the clip and the bullets enter into the magazine, and the, the bullets are fired from the magazine. That is the definition of a magazine. It is something that holds the bullets prior to them being fired. Whereas a clip just holds the bullets prior to being placed into a magazine. Uh, you also get stripper clips for... Uh, for loading internal magazines on like an SKS and also conventional Stanag mags and just regular mags of any kind uh, quite often you'll have uh, cartridges ready to go on stripper clips you place them on top of the magazine, you push down, in they go to the magazine that's what a clip is magazine is something that, like I say, acts as a storage device from which the, um, the cartridges are fed into the firearm but, in common parlance, uh, clip and magazine are seen as synonymous. Uh, for the most part it doesn't matter, but it is, it's kind of a technical use of a term that, that is... It's, it's, it's wrong, but it's, it's one of those things that's popular in movies. Now, Treyarch can normally reasonably on the ball when it comes to realism, at least, you know, traits allied to realism. Uh, why have they called it extended clip? I don't know. I don't know. I think it is to differentiate it from fast mags. Because, obviously, they don't want to cause confusion. So to have two very distinct names for the two attachments, I think better defines them as individual attachments rather than, you know, being too similar. That, 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 that has to be their reasoning. But yes, yes, for the, uh, for the firearm nerd. It is quite a jarring term, but we have to live with it, and uh, I would stick to my guns and, and say extended mags, but that would just cause confusion. So I, I have to go with the game, unfortunately. Eh, uh, no, never mind. Such is, uh, such is life. Ah, I see my uh, selection of clips coming rapidly to an end, so I should probably wrap up this bonus footage. I think all in all, it's um, it's been a relatively successful first episode. Um, thing, you know, I'm I'm happy with the the critical reception. Um, in fact, there have been very few sort of genuine criticisms that that I actually agree with. In fact, there's been very little criticism at all, which is which is a good thing. I mean, I was expecting, I don't know, at least uh, some polarization of response, but no, everything's been universally positive. So uh, hopefully, you know, with the regular Friday videos. Because, of course, now the uh, weapon cards are uploaded on a Friday, if you didn't know. Um, hopefully we'll sort of, uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a train rolling and uh, get some momentum behind this series. And it'll be fun and everything will be gravy. So, thank you very much for watching. I shall join you on Friday for the MP7 guide. Leave your queries, questions and stupid comments on the MP7 video on my Xbox Ahoy channel. And I'll pick them up for the next bonus footage, which will be in about a week from now. And, uh, well, until then, farewell.